Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we're gonna take a look at a Gloomnesia build. Now this one was also per recommendation, but I did want to take a look at it eventually, so let's get started. Neja's one is Firewalker. This is one of the iconic abilities in his kit, giving him extra speed, as well as leaving that massive trail of fire that lasts behind him, damaging and stunning any enemies that happen to walk into it, while also giving you a status cleanse. Now his 2 Blazing Chakram is one of those rare abilities that gives an increased damage vulnerability against enemies. It can bounce up to 6 times with auto aim from your target just like the Cedo and guarantees health orb drops with a chance of energy orbs. His 3 Warding Halo is a massive status immunity ability that also functions like a rhino skin with damage invuln. It absorbs any incoming damage for the first 3 seconds and adds it into his pool. His 4 Divine Spears is an insane CC ultimate with base 19 range, stunning anything that it touches through walls radially from Neja. Once the ability ends, it will knock them down. His passive lets him slide 60% faster and move 35% quicker. So let's take a look at what I did with this kit. Well, I was actually trying to decide between subsuming Gloom over his 1 or 4, and I settled on Firewalker, as he already has a substantial amount of movement speed passively. This build is going to use a ton of range and positive duration which works extremely well from Gloom and this is because it's required for the rest of his kit. Blazing Chakram will be our way to get energy back as well as health orbs which may or may not be useful to variants on his kit while also increasing our damage output through damage vulnerability status on your enemies. Then we have Warding Halo which will basically be our iron skin for status immunity. Finally, our ultimate Divine Spears won't be used too often, but it can lock down an entire room. It is a bit expensive to use, however, the knockdown towards the end will stack with Gloom's 95% slow, turning it into an extra 30-40 seconds after it ends. So without further ado, let's take a look at the build. The first thing you'll notice is we're running Growing Power instead of Brief Respite, and this is because with all the CC on the build, I don't think Brief Respite is necessary. We're sitting at 199 strength, but remember, we can still cap out our slow because we have energy conversion. I think this was important because we wanted to keep our duration positive. This lets the stun from his Divine Spears last much longer, while also giving us a better drain ratio on his Gloom. This does mean you have to pick up the orbs, but I think that'll be okay, as the Blazing Chakram bounces off up to 6 enemies and gives 35% energy orb drop chance to any enemy it tags. The extra range and efficiency also makes it super handy for us to lock down the entire room with Divine Spears. The duration is also nice to make it last longer. To power our Gloom without completely gutting our kit, we've ran Umbral Intensify, Energy Conversion, Growing Power, and still a Transient Fortitude. This lets us sit at 199 strength. You can actually just run a rank 9 Transient, you don't need a rank 10. With Growing Power active, as well as Energy Conversion, that would put us at 269 or 274 strength, which is basically a cap 95% slow. We don't have max efficiency, but that's okay. That's why we have Arcane Energize slotted on, and that's why we have Blazing Chakram. Because we're using energy orbs to sustain our build, we're gonna slot on Arcane Eruption to build even more CC. So now all we're really missing is a way to regenerate shields, but I don't think that will be too much of a problem between Arcane Eruption, Divine Spears, and Gloom. For our pet today, normally I would recommend Worm, but I don't really see a point of it with how many different ways we have to CC the enemies while also having innate status immunity from Warding Halo, so instead I'm gonna recommend the Panzer Vault Pafila. This will help you spread viral procs through the entire room, which will be pretty spread out due to the 95% slow and especially if you choose to use the Divine Spears. It also literally can't die, so that's super reliable for endurance. Now let's take a look at how this build plays out. First, we want to make sure to actually pick up an orb for energy conversion. I'm going to go over proc growing power and then cast my 95% slow. At this point, you're free to prime the enemies as you please, or even CC the room with Divine Spears. It lasts a full 15 seconds, and once it expires, I'm gonna deactivate it here, they get knocked down. This knockdown typically lasts 2 seconds, but on a 95% slow, 2 seconds extends out to nearly 40 seconds, so they won't be getting up anytime soon. And remember, this is the entire tile. If you need energy back, you just cast your Blazing Chakram, dice them up a bit, and you'll get energy orbs and a couple of health orbs. As you recharge your energy, Arcane Eruption will stagger them further, making sure the tile is never able to stand back up or shoot at you. Outside of freak scenarios, you really shouldn't be taking any damage on this setup. 
The range on this build is so high that if I stand here, this 36 meters on my Divine Spear, it's gonna CC everything in the simulacrum. You can see they're all stunned, and if I deactivate it, all of them get knocked down. So the remaining footage in this video is just a demonstration in Steel Path. You can see me proccing growing power here and then using my slow. Now it would be better if I got an energy orb first, however I can just reset the gloom a bit later once I pick one up. Besides that, my next priority once I find some enemies will be proccing my arcane energize so I can stockpile up. You'll have a better shot at this if you cast your blazing chakram on them. Each time your blazing chakram tags an enemy that is speared it will produce an extra chakram and tag another 6 enemies. You honestly won't get too much energy back from this because the cast cost of spears is a little bit higher on this build, but this is a pretty good way to break even on the energy cost if you choose to use spears. Now for the acolytes, well, the 95% slow does work on them as expected. The divine spear will tag them also, however they don't get ragdolled and it only lasts about one second. So you won't get too much out of it, but if you do cast it, I guess you will have that split second to close the gap and then prime them up and try to hack them down. Of course, most of the work will just be done through your slow and your primer. Now my thoughts for Ninja. I do think he works pretty well in Steel Path and is nearly untouchable. For an engaging playstyle, I'd put him in the middle. It's nothing too exciting. It's not really boring either. There is a little bit of energy problems on the original build I suggested. You could drop Umbral Intensify if you really want to and slot in Pax Bolt on a primary kit gun instead and then you still have similar strength and that way you can slot on Prime Flow so you can stockpile energy. Alternatively you can drop Rolling Guard since you don't really need it with all the amount of CC you have. If your shield breaks you can just cast Divine Spear. Or you can even just drop Augur Reach if you really want to, but then we will lose a decent amount of range, and you will lose the Augur set effect, so it is up to you and what you want to do there. If this is your first time watching, feel free to leave a like, or better yet, subscribe. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. 75.8% of you are not subscribed. I'm trying my best to bring you any information about Tempest Story as I can, or any upcoming info about future updates or tips and tricks. I'm also looking forward to get out as much info as I can about the Sisters of Parvo's mainline that's coming up. You don't want to miss out on any of that. That'll be it for this video, thank you all for watching, and see you all next time.